HG branch of the Knights Templar, the oldest order of chivalry. We are grateful to the order for trusting us with some of the most closely guarded secrets of all time. Millions of people have seen unidentified flying objects, UFOs or flying saucers. Many of these strange objects have been seen to be operated by human-like creatures. It is far too frightening for most of us to consider what these objects may be, where they come from and who's sending them. But in this program we will examine the evidence in the form of photos, diagrams and plans which link the enormous number of sightings during and after World War II with research, construction and test flight of a great number of electromagnetically driven craft. Some of these graphics are artists' impressions, but nearly all of what follows has been given to us as genuine material which has been successfully kept secret for half a century. These photographs were taken by an eyewitness who describes a saucer-shaped craft flying a little faster than a jet airplane, flying very low, emitting a faint singing noise. These photos were taken as it flew above him. The sighting was in Germany. Just in time, I take photos as it flies above me. It has three round technical devices underneath and in the middle a deep blue point with the white emblem of the German Nazi party. The UFO is quite large. It is light blue in color and it frightens me. It looks very strange and it flies very quietly away from me. Behind the wall Another UFO is parked in the dark, but I can see all the different parts quite clearly. Again, there are three technical devices underneath, and there are also some sort of wheels which were put underneath to make it movable. It looks like a big axle with big wheels. A truck is there, and a crane in the background. There are only two people visible, one underneath the spaceship and the other one on the roof where there is a small cockpit. Everything is very quiet. There is a cross painted on the spaceship that looks similar to the German Nazi flag. There are no glass windows visible but there are two round openings with something above them. Underneath the UFO there are strange looking plates which look like rotors of a turbine engine but they are probably something different. They are protruding parts underneath that look like guns. They could not possibly be antennas because they are too thick. The ship has a diameter of 18 to 20 meter. It looks really dangerous. Next to the truck there is another car parked. It's a VW. Everyone laughed when I told them the story of what I saw. They say I was drunk, I might have been drunk too much beer, but I convinced I saw a UFO. In the week following this UFO report, there were other reports also from Bavaria. For example, a petrol bowser attendant who said he'd seen a UFO, but people accused him of being drunk and made fun of him. So to avoid further ridicule, he said he was just making a joke. UFO reports are difficult to believe. It's up to each person to form their own opinion and to consider the implications for themselves. On the 14th of December 1944, the New York Times published the first of the UFO news stories. Floating mystery ball is new Nazi air weapon. It was disclosed on December the 13th by the Supreme Headquarters of the Allied Expeditionary Force that a new German weapon made its appearance on the Western Air Front. American airmen report that they are encountering silver-coloured spheres in the air above German territory. The spheres are being encountered singly and in clusters. Sometimes they are semi-translucent. This report is suggestive of electromagnetically driven craft. 
These objects frequently appeared where German troops were concentrated in northern Europe. Many ghost rockets were sighted, especially in Scandinavia and Norway. On the screen now is a drawing from the SS files dated 7th of November 1943. The existence of UFOs, which almost all serious researchers now regard as a fact, give us a clue about a whole new technology. The enormous sparks we call lightning give us a glimpse at the immense energy freely available to power these machines. The life energy inside every human being is another aspect of this same magical power. These things are spoken of in the German Tuller Society and through one of its members in the SS. These concepts were quite different to those of the German military at the time. This was the beginnings of the first so-called Green Party and perhaps ironically a search for a new harmony between man and nature. In the German Tuller Society the secret sign was the Black Sun. This same sign was evident in ancient Babylon and to the Cathedrals and the Phoenicians. In these ancient times the sign of the Black Sun was symbolized by a cross. The cross recurs throughout history as a symbol of power. This symbol can be seen in the swastika of the Third Reich. across the scene on this Messerschmitt. The Knight's Cross is a variation of this symbol, which is thousands of years old. We do not know where the Germans of the Third Reich got their ideas. This drawing of ancient Babylon displays the concept of an invincible power from the heavens. Victor Schauberger was one of the leading scientists in the very intense push for a new and clean energy. Simplified, it could be called implosion instead of explosion. There was a group within the Third Reich who were searching for constructive solutions, not destructive ones. In these diagrams you can see a new type of vehicle was being planned. The normal combustion engines using fossil fuels in our cars are dependent on the explosion principle and hence tend to be destructive to the environment. Victor Schauberger's experimental vehicles were based on esoteric principles and focused his research on electrogravitation. In other words, regarding gravity as an electrical force which can be utilized for propulsion. The U-13 department of the SS concentrated their efforts on this technique. This was the means by which the Honeyboo flying saucer was powered. 
Here you can see the construction plans of the Hanibu 2. The computer graphic enhancement shows something of the look of these Hanibu flying saucers. The engine is very likely to have been designed by Captain Hans Kohler and built by the German AEG company in 1944. The engine being called the Kohler Converter. This engine was designed so that it needed a relatively small amount of energy to activate it. This energy coming from an accumulator or battery. After a short time, the Kohler converter built up sufficient energy transformed from the gravitational field of the Earth. This is a diagram of the Kohler converter. And this is a photograph of the actual converter. Operating on a principle of genius simplicity. This is a preliminary sketch of the Hanibu 2. The cockpit here is outlined in red. With a circular driving unit beneath outlined in purple. With adjacent space for people or soldiers. This machine was built somewhat like a modern ship, designed to be self-sufficient for long periods of time, with sleeping space and working area. Looking a bit like the brim of a hat, the saucer part of this machine is the means by which it is steered. This being achieved by emitting an electrically generated force in the chosen direction. There were a number of other spherical and saucer shaped prototypes also built at this time, but using conventional rocket power. Under the code V7, a number of military prototypes were developed. These were concurrent with the V1 and V2 rocket developments. The Schreiber Habimol flying machine was a jet propelled vertical takeoff and landing craft developed in 1942. The first three prototypes were badly damaged when tested and the project was abandoned. Dr. Richard Meaty, in cooperation with the Italian researcher Dr. Giuseppe Boluzza, also worked on a flying machine which was round in shape and developed a new V7 prototype. Here are two photographs of the V7, Hitler's new wonder weapon. On the 7th of April 1944, Mitty showed construction plans to Hitler and demonstrated the vehicle in flight. In this photograph, Hitler is standing next to a model of the new prototype. This V7 saucer was built with 12 BMW engines of the type 028. The V7 rose to 20,000 metres on the first test and 24,000 metres on the second test. Helium was the fuel used in this machine.
Here is a plan of the V7. 